Hi everyone and welcome back to NodeFlow. In the second episode of the Verlum 101 series, uh, we'll talk about constraints. In particular, we'll focus on the cloth constraints. In the last video, we talked about how we can create a simple Verlum cloth simulation, and then we added an animated collider to spice things up a little bit. Uh, so make sure to watch it, as it's key to understand today's topics. Um, as I said, today we'll talk about constraints, and we have lots of stuff to talk about. Constraints is the core of how Verlum works. So let's start. Here I have a geometry node that I named Balloon02 uh, and inside of it I have a planar patch and a torus, a planar patch set on the ZX plane in, and then the torus that I'm using as a collider and then we have a Balloon cloth here and then we are solving everything here in the, in the Balloon solver. Uh, if this is uh, weird for you, make sure to watch the first video as uh, if you watched it, this should be very easy to understand. Um, I'm visualizing the constraints here uh, by creating a node. And lastly, I have another node here that I will explain in a moment. Um, so the focus of today is this node. Uh, we are setting up some constraints here that are defining how the cloth should behave in the simulation. This is the focus of today's video. Uh, the constraints are everything in Bellum. So right now we are visualizing them uh, because we are here, we are on show guide geometry. If we don't want to visualize them, let's uncheck this one. Uh, for now, it's important to visualize them, so I will leave it on, but just for you to know. This node, it's actually a Vellum constraint node that has a preset already of cloth. So it means that this Vellum constraints node, we have selected here cloth. Udin already comes with some presets. So if this is the classic node of Vellum constraints, we can choose in the tab Vellum constraints, all of these. These are just presets. It's uh, you need a unique way to help you to be faster uh, when working with Vellum, instead of just creating this one and then manually selecting the kind of constraints you want. Uh, today's topic again is the um, cloth constraints in particular. So the cloth constraints is actually made by two constraints together, the stretch constraints and the bend constraints. To better understand it, I will create a blast node. I will blast or delete one of the constraints to visualize the other because right now they are overlapping. I will delete the bend one so I can visualize the stretch. This is how the stretch constraints look like. And I can just delete the stretch constraints to visualize the bend ones. So while the stretch constraints define how stiff a cloth should be, so if they are very strong, they will, they will hold the cloth together. If they are very weak, the cloth will be very stretchy. The bend constraints actually define how much the cloth should bend on its own. So a very low value of bend constraint means that the cloth will hold less together and so there will be more wrinkles on it, while a very high value will mean that the cloth will not be able to bend too much, making the cloth very stiff looking. So to better visualize that and to transform this theory in practice, let's uh, play a little bit with our setting. Here we have these two parameters that I was talking about. And to better visualize it, I also want to pin these two points in position. So I will go into pin points and select one and two. I decided to do this on the lesson on purpose, so you can see also how to pin some points in a simulation. Pinning means that this point will not be simulated. And so if we press play, they will hold the cloth together. And here we have our basic cloth simulation. This is a multiplier of our value of that we have here for the stretch stiffness. Um, if we set that to one e plus ten, that means one followed by uh, ten zeros. So one zero 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 for ten times. And it's great that we have this, so we don't have to type here huge values to actually to actually change uh, our uh, constraints behavior. We can just leave this one as one, and then change this multiplier. So now that we understand that, we can play with this setting. Setting the constraints to a lower value will make the cloth more stretchy. So let's try. Setting to 0 0.01 and pressing play, you can see the, the cloth is way stretchier. I'm on purpose choosing a very high value to make you visualize that. And now that we have a very strong way of visualizing it, I will just set that to a more normal, natural way. And 
we still have a very stretchy cloth, but that's the point, right? So by lowering the uh, the power of these constraints and by setting a lower value, we are actually allowing the cloth to uh, to stretch more. So the constraints, what they do, they are actually holding the cloth together. If they are not so strong, you have something like that happening. And you see this springy behavior, right? It's going up and down and up and down. And this is normal, of course, because the glove is stretching. To address this issue, you ideally could uh, change this damping ratio. The damping ratio is a way to dissipate energy of your simulation after a while. So if you, if this is set to a very low value, it will bounce a lot. And sometimes this will be this will bother us and we will create some jitter effects and some unwanted effects. Putting this one to a higher value ensures that the springiness effects go away. Let's visualize this for the last time so we can use this one to compare. You see the cloth will be stretching and then coming up together and then it will do that for a long time. Uh, setting this one to something like one that is considered to be the maximum will give a cloth that will actually lose this energy that it gains way faster. And so it will not be going up and down, up and down uh, uncontrollably. So let's wait for a moment that it's solving. I should specify that actually I'm using three substeps in the Velon Solver to have more accurate results. Uh, I've not talked about substeps yet because they are not the topics of these lessons for now, but I will introduce them in a later stage. You see, it's not going up. It's It lost all its energy. And yeah, so this parameter is very important here. And let's head back to how it was before. Uh, for the band stiffness, we have the same thing, but the band actually is very it's very cool. I'm always going back to the default version, so you can actually compare the default version to the new one that we'll show in a moment. The classic one, and the band stiffness defines how much these polygons should bend from their original angle. You see, we have a pretty interesting angle here, but if we set the constraint to be stronger, right now it's pretty weak. Let's say the maximum, just to illustrate my point, and go back. You see, it's not even folding too much here. It's just, it's not bending. You see, it's it's almost like if it was of metal, right? Because the maximum angle allowed here between this and this, in this case, is not so high. By making these constraints weaker and allowing the cloth to move a little bit more freely, and I will make a very low value again to emphasize this, the cloth will be very, very wrinkly. So it depends on what you want to do. You see, it's curving a lot here. We are having way more details from these wrinkles. Another thing that I should mention that influences this is the topology. So. The damping ratio again will work the same way. It will dissipate the energy of the band, so it will mean that these bands, uh, these these wrinkles, will go back to the uh, original state uh, faster. Um, let's set the topology to a different value, so you can see what happens. I will change the planar patch to have a topology of I don't know, zero point nine, almost nothing, right? I should also reselect my pin points and as now my pin num has changed. So my point num has changed. So I will select these two and I will press play. But before I will make the settings as they were before. So I will change this one back to 0.001. The cloth is still acting very stiff and this is because uh, the topology is not enough to simulate something like that. Conversely, if we change the planar patch to something that has a very high topology and we press play after we set our uh, pin constraints again. So I'm going here and setting one here and one here. Pressing enter to confirm. And let's see what happens. Same settings, but different, um, different uh, density of polygons. You see, it's already stretching way more than before. Although we have not changed the settings. This is just to say that the simulation will be influenced by the quantity of polygons that you have. It's another thing to take, take into consideration. Well, now we actually understood lots of things about cloth. We know what they are, the cloth constraints, what they are. We know that it's composed by two kinds of constraints that we saw here. You see the cloth, it's a combination of 
stretch and bend because this one defines the stretch constraints and this defines the bend constraints. Let's create a balloon constraints here. You see distance along edges defines the stretch and bend across triangle uh, defines the bend. There are two types of constraints. I've tried to use them and they are not so usable by them themselves. Uh, please feel free to play with them. But the great thing is that, is that someone combined both of them into the cloth constraints and we have this uh, powerful node here. Uh, so just a little bit of theory to make you understand how it's working everything under the hood. Okay, lastly, let's see how we can add some uh, noise to make sure that some parts behave differently than others on the cloth. In this case, I want to create some parts that stretch less than others. So I will just reduce my topology here on the planner project, setting a value of 0.08. I will add an attribute noise node. And right now it's a noise up color. I want to noise this attribute here. So going in the search stiffness in scale by attribute, I will copy this name and paste it here so that we can alter it before it enters the simulation. I will make sure it sets to float, uh, set to zero centered, and set it to at least two of amplitude. And now I will play with the element size and with the offset. So we have some bigger patches that will be uh, stiffer, less stretchy, because they will have a higher value of constraints. And then I have these parts that are supposed to stretch way more. So let's see the result. Uh, I'm visualizing it by clicking here. So make sure to visualize it. And now I will just go back and press play and see what happens. So as you can see, the cloth is stretching a lot, and that's because we have to set a minimum value for the stretch stiffness. In the post process, let's set a minimum of 0.01, and now it should behave more as we expect. Yeah, it's stretching way more on the purple parts because they have a very low value for the stretch stiffness, and so the constraints are not able to hold everything up. While on the red parts, it's holding it up way better. So this is how you can add variety on your cloth, modifying these attributes. And of course, this applies to everything that you have here. You can scale the damping, the damping ratio and you can scale also the bend stiffness. So have fun with this setup. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, drop a like and subscribe is very important, uh, for, especially now that I'm just starting out with this channel. I'm loving, I'm loving it doing tutorials so far. Um, so thank you for sticking until the end and I will see you in the next one.